Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to start episode 1 of the DaVinci Resolve playbook. So obviously uh, I'm not gallivanting around Wales at the moment, I'm here at the home office, but as well as being a camera enthusiast and all things filmmaking, uh, I'm also a certified DaVinci Resolve editing trainer. What does that mean? Uh, well, essentially, I've just had formal training to teach the software to others rather than just downloading the software and winging it. Although, hey, I did do that with After Effects and Photoshop. Uh, and yeah, as stated, this will be editing based, not necessarily uh, coloring or on the Fairlight page. Now, if you've seen our previous playbook episodes with After Effects with Todd and Premiere Pro with Charles, you'll know it's not necessarily uh, an editing tutorial where you get from A to B. It's more of a goodie bag of a number of different tips and quick tricks. So you can strengthen your skill set with that specific software, or at least say, hey, I wish I knew that. So let's jump to the first one. Before we talk about any tip, we first have to talk about the most useful feature in DaVinci Resolve's editing page. It will directly affect the clips you insert onto a timeline and any edits being made. It will also cause you a lot of headaches if you're unsure how it works. Any ideas? It's this, here, auto select. The best way to think of auto select is that when activated, it's telling Resolve, hello, make sure you include me in any edits. For example, if I ripple delete this clip, every single clip on an active track past the playhead will fall back to the space which was taken up by the deleted clip. The same goes for any inserts or ripple edits and so on. Every edit affects the timeline as a whole, or more specifically, affects the tracks with auto select active. But importantly, it can cause a lot of headaches if you're prone to using delete instead of backspace. Backspace removes a single clip, delete will delete that space. And as a result, you may find yourself moving clips and audio tracks that you wanted to remain in place backwards. Therefore, be vigilant with what tracks have auto select on. But notably, it will allow you to be more fluid with the selections of your edit. For example, if I want to remove these two clips to reveal the bottom clip, I just quickly make an in and out point, which is I and O, turn off auto select so Resolve can't see these two tracks, hit backspace, job done. No need to decrease the length of these clips, no need to get the blade tool out and start chopping up these clips, just a precise and straightforward edit thanks to auto select. And this function is also incredibly important when we look at the next tip from this playbook episode, which is my favorite keyboard shortcuts. If you recently moved from Premiere, you may notice that there isn't a tool or a button to select all clips on a track. That's because it's under a keyboard shortcut, which is Y. My favorite variation of the shortcut is Alt plus Y, which will select all clips across all tracks forward from the playhead. This is perfect for when you want to move all clips forward or backward for whatever reason. And just like we talked about in our previous entry, if we have auto select on or off, when clicking Alt and Y, it's only going to select the tracks which have auto select on. Recently, I've been cutting uh, a lot of interviews, whether that's for work or for tutorial presentations of myself. And unlike uh, an, a shot that has an actionable sequence, for example, um, a horse jumping over a fence or something like that, which is two minutes long, you can quickly scrub through that clip and find the precise moment you're looking for. Uh, obviously, with an interview, because the interviewee is static, it's going to be hard to try and find that moment you're looking for. And when scrubbing through that clip, uh, either in the source monitor or on the timeline, uh, it's going to be difficult to find that precise moment. So you're going to have to play back and listen to the entire interview. That can take a while, so let's look at a keyboard shortcut to speed that up. So we know the basic movement shortcuts, J, K, L. J to rewind, K to stop, and L forward. If you didn't, well, now you do. Well, if you hold Shift L or double tap L, and likewise with K, the playback is sped up at twice the speed. You can hit L again to increase the four times and so on, but at two times, we can now listen through a lengthy interview to try and find that critical moment without taking up too much of our time. So given that we can bring back even the harshest to some extent of highlights, so even though we can bring back even the harshest of highlights to some extent, it's just someone... My next favorite keyboard shortcut that doesn't get a lot of light is the nudge keyboard shortcut, which is comma to nudge a clip backwards or period to nudge a clip forward. However, that specific shortcut I don't think is wholly unique or not known to the world. However, if you were to hit T, which brings you into trim mode, the way Resolve interprets the nudge is different. Instead of rolling the clip up the timeline, it instead slips the position of the media. And if you're not too sure what a slip edit is, let's say that we have a 20 second clip and uh, we've edited five seconds of that onto the timeline. By slip editing, 
we're adjusting what five seconds of those 20 seconds we're gonna be presenting through the edited clip on the timeline. So everything stays the same, the length, the neighboring clips, but the media within those five seconds have moved up or slipped into a different position of the original file. And for this playbook episode, the final shortcut I will be recommending is Control plus R, which is gonna show the retime control. This is an excellent way of manipulating the speed of the clip instead of just right clicking and selecting speed change. For example, you can increase the clip speed by 200%, then reverse it and later play it forward at 50%, all within the same clip with only the one effect applied. You can see a visualization of the retime speed change on the clip itself. You can see the arrows appear on the top of the clip when you've entered retime. The yellow arrows indicate that the clip has been slowed down and the compact blue indicates that the clip has been sped up. And you can also see the percentage change of the increase or decrease to the clip speed. A friend, if you have many layers with hundreds of different clips, the visualization of that speed change can help you find that clip more easily. Like the rate stretch tool in Premiere Pro, you can now expand the clip manually by simply moving your cursor over the clip in the retime bar where it says speed change. Although if you try to rate stretch your clip by dragging the sides, it will just expand or decrease the clip's natural duration. It's important to note that if you're in normal edit mode, which is keyboard shortcut A, you will trim the neighboring media. If your speed duration increases the clip size and you are in trim edit mode, which is T, you will ripple the timeline. At the bottom of the clip, you can find a small black drop down triangle. And by clicking on this, you will open the retime speed menu here. You see the same options from the clip speed menu, plus some extra features. Now, one of my favorite features from Premiere Pro, which is just missing in Resolve, and I haven't used Premiere Pro for years, is uh, the snapshot feature, the ability to take a still image of something on your timeline, and then you could export that as a thumbnail for YouTube. Uh, but what I used to love doing, and especially for someone who creates software tutorials, when you're just rambling on like now, and there's nothing to present online, uh, on screen, sorry, is to use that as a freeze frame. Now in Resolve, we do have the ability to freeze, which I believe is Shift R to freeze a, a clip. Uh, but the problem is um, that freezes the entire clip and then you need to go in and get the blade tool and splice some clips apart and then freeze that specific clip. But using the retime control, it's actually a lot easier to specifically identify what part of that clip you want to freeze. So to do that, find where I want the freeze frame to occur and then add a speed point and change that selection to a freeze frame. Now with the talk of speed changes and increasing the speed will bring me to my next tip, which is how you can get slow motion footage without shooting at a higher frame rate. Now, I don't know if you guys can remember this. I might be showing my age, even though I'm only 29. Uh, a plugin called Twixeter and it came out when the 5D Mac 2 was all the rage. And it was a plugin for After Effects that would optically blend frames together uh, to make 24 frames per second footage look a lot slower. Now, uh, if you look at this clip from an old web series that didn't see the light of day, I've used it in this specific sequence and it, it looks it looks good. It looks good for what it was, but you can see some here, uh, basically when there was heavy movement or the camera was moving fast, it, it, they would blend and ghost together. It wasn't that well. Uh, but that was a paid plugin, but we have something similar in DaVinci Resolve. It's not in the effects library, nor is it in a pop-up menu when you click speed change. Instead, you need to open the inspector, scroll down to retime and scaling and select optical flow. Optical flow will generate new frames based on the information of the previous and following frames to create a realistic slow motion effect. Now, of course, there is a limit to how far this can be pushed along with the movement within your shot. But for the most part, I think if you have a simple pan or a static shot with minimal movement, you may be able to convey a slower sense of speed. In this shot from my previous tutorial, the camera pan is a little too fast. So I turned on optical flow, reduced the speed to 75%, and we have a better pan across. And finally, we're gonna have a look at a few ways to declutter the UI. Now, the software engineers have done a fantastic job at giving you a streamlined user interface. In fact, there's very little to declutter in comparison with, say, After Effects that can get very wild. It's very fluid and responsive. Panels can be opened by simply clicking the respective icon, extended by pulling or pushing the box edge. And when you see these icons, it means that we can extend the panel. And not only that, we can then add another panel box to the UI. That's amazing, and yet not a lot of cleaning to do. But what I do like to change are these page buttons at the bottom. You may have noticed previously these weren't here. 
And it's kind of like if you have a pin program on your taskbar and you accidentally click Photoshop when you just wanted to open Spotify. And then you have to wait a few moments for it to close. It could be a hassle to click these buttons too. And also, if you have a low performing PC, the Fusion page can take a little bit longer to load up. So what I suggest in doing is removing the tabs that you know you're not going to use. And you can do this by window, show page, and then deselect the pages. And the final timeline tip, uh, sometimes after a long edit, you may find your timeline has got away from you despite trying to be organized. And you have a timeline and video tracks, which is quite cluttered, it just clips on separate video tracks for no reason. Uh, for example, if we look at this edit, in this specific area, there's no real reason why these clips should be so spread out on different video tracks. So instead of trying to bring down each clip by myself, which may knock it off its position within the timeline, we're going to go to Timeline, Clean Up Timeline, Flatten Unused Clips. As a result, any track that features free space, or if the clip underneath is not being used, Resolve flattens everything. We quickly zoom out and compare the before and after. You can really see the difference. All right, guys, I'm going to be leaving it here for the first episode of the DaVinci Resolve playbook. Try to find a format which um, discussed a few different areas of the editing page because there is so much to discover and, um, and to learn about. So I will be seeing you guys next time with episode two and uh, stay safe.